And we're going to start with the division that won it all last year or the team that represented that division and won it all last year. I'm talking about the Gaza City Chiefs. So we're going to start with the AFC West. So I look at the AFC West last year. I'll give you the quick records from the teams last year. Chiefs finished first, 12 and 4, 6 and 0 oh in the division. Uh, followed by the Broncos in second place, 7 and 9, 3 and 3 in the division. Same thing could be said for the Raiders. Uh, they finished 7 and 9, 3 and 3 in the division. They finished third, and then the Chargers finished 5 and 11, 0 oh and 6 in the division. Didn't realize the Chargers didn't win a single game within the division last year. That's going to change this year. However, uh, so when you look at this division, I think the Chiefs are still the cream of the crop with Mahomes under center, with all the talent that they have offensively, adding a guy like um, Edwards Elaire. I think they're just getting stronger offensively. You know, if they're relatively healthy, they're dangerous no matter who's out there because of who's under center in Patrick Mahomes. He didn't get the richest deal in American sports history for no reason. Uh, this guy is the truth. Fully expect the Chiefs to be uh, the best team, not only in this division, but one of the best teams in the AFC conference. And so um, I've got the Chiefs finishing the season at 11 and 5. Uh, I think this defense still has a ways to go. However, they're just so dynamic offensively that they're going to outscore a bunch of teams. As I've mentioned, they're going to have a tough go of it. They play the NFC South this year. They've got some big time matchups, man. I mean, they play the Patriots. They play the Buccaneers. They play the Saints. I mean, they've got a, they play the Ravens. They've got a heavyweight uh, schedule when it, when you look at the Chiefs schedule it's a heavyweight schedule I mean they got the brunt of it and so you know when you play the AFC East you're going to get a little bit of a break there I believe but the NFC South plus you won the division so you're going to get the Patriots you're going to get the Ravens and, and you're going to get the Titans again or excuse me the the Texans who you'll play week one I think it's going to be a pretty interesting uh, go of it this year. But 11-5 and five is the best I can see the Chiefs doing. But uh, that's going to be good enough for a divisional crown yet again in the AFC West. You go to the team that finished second in this division. It's the Denver Broncos last year. And uh, Denver Broncos are a team that I was really high on coming into this offseason. And then you see the moves that they were able to make. Uh, via the draft and, and you look at what they did to finish up the season last year you're really excited about Drew Locke you're excited about all the weapons Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler and Albert O and all the guys that they added to the mix obviously Melvin Good in the third and you just look at all of the weapons that they have not to mention you know Philip Lindsay already there and uh the the big receiver uh man uh oh, shucks uh Cameron Sutton uh, uh, Cortland, excuse me, Sutton already out there and um, uh, 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 Noah Fant already out there. Just so many weapons for the Broncos. And so you, you look at the offense. I'm not sure about the offensive line. I've, I've stressed to you guys all offseason that I'm not sure about their offensive line, especially with uh, their right tackle opting out, their left tackle being one of the worst uh, left tackles in all of football. Um, I, I just I don't know about their offensive line, but if they can get it to their playmakers, look out. The defense took a massive blow with the injury to Von Miller, not to mention they lost Chris Harris Jr. in the offseason in free agency to a member of this division. It's going to be tough for the Denver Broncos defensively, I believe, even though they're going to be well coached and they still got talent on the defensive side of the football. I think they take a step back with the loss of Von Miller. He was good for at least a win, maybe even two down the stretch of games when you need a closer he's the kind of guy that comes through for you and Broncos fans may say well what happened last year we had a couple of games where we didn't get it done Jacksonville comes to mind Chicago comes to mind I'll tell you the Chicago game I thought that um, it was a, um, a poor call late in that game and in the Jacksonville game um, I, he had a, a head a, ha um, a hit to the helmet of uh, the quarterback um, oh shucks the Jacksonville quarterback uh, Gardner Minshew look bottom line is you could have won those football games it's going to be a lot tougher to win those games now 
not having Von Miller. I've got this team finishing eight and eight this year. They're still gonna be highly competitive and a scary team even to go up against with all that offensive firepower, but I don't know if it'll be enough for them to be able to win some of those close ball games down the stretch. You look at the Oakland Raiders, excuse me, the Las Vegas Raiders. This is a team finished nine and seven or seven and nine last year. Uh, I look at this team this year, a lot of question marks. You already lose one of your key receivers um, and a veteran, one of the few veterans you had on your football team. You got a couple of young rookies that you're going to be relying heavily on at the receiver position. I think both of those guys are good and are going to help this year. You got a, a star in the making in the backfield in Joshua Jacobs. I think there are a lot of talented football players, including Darren Waller at the tight end position. Uh, when you look at the Raiders football team, they've got a lot of stuff there that is intriguing. But losing Tyrell Williams, I think, was a massive blow because now you're relying on a bunch of first and second year guys at the receiver position. Not to mention that I still think there's something missing at the quarterback position with Derek Carr. I don't know if there's a synchronicity there between he and John Gruden quite yet. Uh, we'll see. I think this is a big year for those two. If something doesn't go right here, maybe Gruden will go looking for a veteran quarterback because we know Gruden isn't the biggest fan of young quarterbacks. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Defensively, I still think they've got a long ways to go. Uh, I think that's going to be where they probably lose some games this year and ultimately finished up the season at seven and nine. They've got a brand new stadium that they'll be playing in. Should be fun, should be an interesting year for the Vegas Raiders. A lot of changes to this staff, a lot of, or excuse me, to this um, roster. Um, and, and, you know, I, I like this, the, what they've done in the secondary, but they're young in the secondary. And I think that's what's going to cost them as you look at that football team. Not enough pressure up front getting to the quarterback and then uh, con, con, uh Conversely, or consequently, you're going to have some issues in the back end with a young uh, secondary. Remember, you got a safety that everyone loves in Jonathan Abram, but he missed most of the season last year. So it's just young all around for the Raiders. Seven and nine again uh, for the Raiders as they repeat seven and nine in back to back years. And then finally, you got the Los Angeles Chargers. They're playing in a brand new stadium themselves this year. And uh, this is a team that I'm excited to see because. I think their head coach, Anthony Lynn, is finally getting the kind of quarterbacking that he has longed for in Los Angeles. With Phillip Rivers, it was hit or miss. If Phillip was on, they had a chance to beat anybody. If Phillip was off, he had a chance to throw them out of any single game they played in. 5-11, and 11, not what they had intended. Injuries really bit them in the ass last year, and it's already starting up this year. They're one of those teams that just seems to have a hard time outrunning the injury reaper. And so hopefully they can stay relatively healthy this year. But Tyrod Taylor is going to lead them. Again, this is the scary thing about this Chargers team. They're one injury away from having to turn to a rookie quarterback that's not ready to play. And Tyrod has not been the most healthy quarterback uh, in the league when he has been given the keys to start. That's something that should trouble you if you're a Chargers fan, is that the, Tyrod Taylor is not the cleanest uh, bill of health in terms of, of, of a quarterback starting in this league. And all it takes is one hit for him to go down and, and you be staring at a rookie quarterback and Justin Herbert in the face and asking him to lead this veteran group of players that are ready to win right now. So it'll be interesting to see what the Chargers are able to do. I'm going to bank on Tyrod staying relatively healthy and him leading this team to a 9-7 and seven, uh, record, which is good enough for second place in this division and also good enough to qualify for the postseason. So uh, when I look at this division as a whole, two teams come out of it. The 11 and five Chiefs win the division, followed by the nine and seven Chargers, who also qualify for the postseason. Then the Denver Broncos come in at eight and eight, finishing third, and the uh, Las Vegas Raiders bring up the rear at seven and nine. Mm -hmm.